so they're watching Seb and Cassie. Did you get a treat? Oh, M and All right, so we just got out of Dixie Lee bait and tackle. We got five dozen shrimp and some M and M's. Go figure. <laughs> so we're gonna head out and see what we can get into. I bet you by the end of the day we've got a cooler full of snapper and some grouper. I hope. All right. See you then. So I just want to show you guys kind of how this looks in real time. So behind us, we've got the rods trolling back here. The, the lures are obviously being pulled behind the boat. We're going 4.96 mile an hour in 10 foot of water. We've got uh, 10 foot divers on back there. Well, we've got a 10 and an eight. So we're real close to the bottom. All right, guys, we're sending out the big one today. Let's see if we can't get a big old grouper. All right, look, that's what it looks like when it's tracking good. If all goes well, it'll bend over here in a minute. Look, Mackenzie, we got a little bit of rock over there. Oop, fish on, fish on. Babe, slow us down. Oh, this might be a keeper. Felt some good head shakes. I think this might be the first keeper on this new one. Oh yeah, he's a keeper. Nice one. Oh yeah, look at that one. Nice one. Nice one. Thanks. That's a stud. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Holy. Wow. Keep it. Put it in neutral, babe. Are we going to eat it? Oh, yeah, we are. That sucker's going to be dinner tonight. That was no time when we caught this. Oh, yeah. Look at the size of this one. How big do you think he is? Dang. Yeah, we don't want that. All right, guys, just like that, we got a big old keeper grouper. How about that? We'll show you how to cook this bad boy when we get home tonight. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I like to tie on a diving lure. I've got a 15 foot diving lure by Rapala, an X-Wrap. And I have about uh, five foot, a 50 pound liter. So first, I make an overhand knot with my leader, and then cinch it down to about the size of a pea, about that big. And then you take your tag end, slide it through the loop on the lure, and then you take your tag end and go through the top of that loop knot. Cinch it down to about there. Wrap it around the line, the main line, about three or four times, just depending on what size leader you've got. And then send it back through the hole. Make sure all three of those lines that are coming through the hole are both on the same side. So see how they're all sitting on top? And then you cinch that down. There you have a nice loop knot. Makes your uh, diving lure swim real nice and it's pretty weedless. So this is what we like to do. Oh, oh that one about took you overboard, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I heard I heard it back here and I was like, 
<laughs> What's going on? Somebody lost their footing. Yeah. I don't think it's that big a one, but I definitely almost went in. I bet you it's a keeper. It might be. If, if it almost yanked you off here, it's got to be a keeper. I don't know. I really, I wasn't holding on that tight. I didn't pull any drag. But it's a good one. He's yeah, I was going to say, I see a head shake. He's going to be close. Yeah, probably like 22 or something. Maybe not. Maybe he'll be a big one. Color. Yep. Yeah. He's short. Very big. But they fight like crazy. They sure do. Look at that. It's okay. My first. Look, Mackenzie, it's a hogfish. Never caught one of those before. Look at the limit. Check out this giant gag grouper that Greg caught. This thing is so big it barely even fits on the cutting board. I'm going to show you how to fillet it. You're going to take your knife and make an angled cut at the head, or just before the head, right behind the gill plate. You want to make sure you get all the way up into that head meat, and then take the first quarter inch of your knife and run it down the spine of the grouper. Gag grouper are my favorite type of fish to fillet. They're just so, uh, the skin on them is so soft and they don't have these like hard armored scales like a sheephead or a redfish. So they're just a breeze to fillet, even the bigger ones. So then once you've ran your knife all the way down the back, I like to take it and poke it all the way through around the tail and then slide your knife down. Take your knife and just run it down all the way, extra close to the spine. Make sure you don't miss any meat. Like this video if you think it's cool that she's filleting this. <laughs> yeah, it's sound pretty cool. <laughs> she does all right, huh? Oh my god, this is heavy. <laughs> Check out that giant fillet. It's so thick. That's a really good fish. Yeah, I'm excited to eat it. Yeah, me too. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I skin it. You just wanna make yourself like a little handle back here. Grab on, angle your knife downward. All right, 
Nice. All right, and they do have the pin bones in the middle, so you want to get those and any little bit of bloodline out of there. And I like to run it right through here is where the uh, pin bones are. So take it and just right along that bloodline on each side. Go down, and it does cut out a little bit of meat, but nobody wants those pin bones in there. If you got chickens, they love this kind of stuff. We used to have chickens and turkeys, and we'd give them the whole carcasses. We'd just throw the carcass in the oven and uh, heat the carcass, you know, get the meat to where they can just easily plug it off, and we'd just throw the whole thing out there. They love that stuff. Yeah, they'd pick it clean. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how I make this fish batter. First, you take a cup and a half of flour, four tablespoons of cornstarch, teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of baking powder, and a cup and a half of water. So just mix that all in together. I also like to add a little bit of like salt, pepper, garlic, or any type of all-purpose seasoning that you have on hand will work. Just get some salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic. I don't even measure it. I just sprinkle and judge it as I go. And a little bit of paprika also. Just mainly for color. These onion rings are made with that same batter. Yeah, it's delicious. So if you have any left over or just you want to make an extra batch of it, they are so good. So just get it all mixed up. You don't want it to be like lumpy or anything. And then you take your fish. I like to sprinkle it with a little bit of Everglades seasoning. And we've cut our grouper into some smaller strips just so it's a little bit easier to fry, gets a little bit crispier, doesn't take too long. All right, then take your fish strips, dunk them into the batter. I'm just gonna do a couple to show you. Get them all nice and coated. And once your oil is nice and hot, you're gonna dip them in. You hear that sizzle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really want your oil to be hot or else they will not brown up as quick as you'd like. Fried grouper. Mm -hmm. Does it get any better than that? All right. And Hit now that we like button if you like fresh grouper. Yeah, it's so good. Just hear the crunch. Wait, I'll make sure I get you guys a little clip of that crunch you get when you're biting down on <laughs> these. These are the most crunchy, delicious, like a light crunch. Oh my gosh, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, it's definitely not like a heavy chicken tender style breading. We've really also does, tried that though, and that's really good. <laughs> it really does remind me of Long John Silver's batter. 
I know that sounds crazy, and some people may be like, eh. It's close. It reminds me of it. It's definitely not the same. So now I'm going to pull these off. They look delicious, nice and golden brown. You can check your fish with a thermometer if you'd like, but I know these are done after a piece of time or two. Mmm. <laughs> Tasty. Yum. All right, guys. So on that note, we're going to cook the rest of these up. You might get to see another clip of that. You might not. I'm not sure yet, but we're going to get to eating because I'm starving. All right, so these are cooled off enough now and I'm gonna give them a try. My favorite thing to dip them in is buffalo sauce. Somebody else might have a different opinion, but that's my favorite way to have them. Mmm. Look at that flaky, delicious goodness. The little crispy bits on the outside. Oh, that's so good. Definitely not the healthiest way to eat fish, but it's so good. Mm. You want a bite? Yeah. <laughs> Buffalo. All right, guys. Um. Fish <laughs> <laughs> <Can you? laughs> Did you hear, hear the crunch? crunch? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, one more time. Mmm. Oh my goodness. This is where this video comes to an end. We're getting ready to go eat these nice pieces of fish and these onion rings and some salad. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more like this. I hope you like the video. Until next time, y'all. Peace out.